Good morning, friends. Today I wanted to play a little bit with uh, these little pansies. So I'm going to draw them. Let me just flip my pad around so that spiral isn't in my way. Of course, today I'm using those wonderful Artisto pads I tell you about all the time. Um, they're really reasonable, great texture, great quality. And I love that they're in this spiral, so you can keep them, you can fill a book, date it, and you can always refer back and look to past years or months and see how much you've grown. And they also have that perforation, so you can tear off that uh, your masterpiece if you care to do so. So thanks for being here with me. Um, of course, I'm Debbie, and uh, let's just practice sketching a few of these little cute little pansies and I'm actually going to sketch three of them. My pencil is a little dull so we'll see how this does. I'm using my black wing um, pencil and I love it because it has that little replaceable eraser because what I end up having is a bunch of E, uh, pencils with no erasers. So I really like these and the erasers really thin. So I'll link that in the bottom for you. What I have found about pansies, I do have little pansies, is let's just start with the middle because we want to make sure all our beautiful little petals are pointed towards the middle. So I'm going to do a pansy here, rule of odds. I'm going to um, place three of them. I'm going to do a little pansy here and a little pansy here. So we've kind of got this S shape as far as composition, which I always love. And then we'll add some fun little leaves and greenery around it. All right, with a pansy, how I start is, it's almost like an upside down heart. So it's going to come out like this and something like that. Then I'm going to come up and I'm going to fill in two more of those. And I like to ruffle my edges, just like that. Almost looks like a butterfly as well, doesn't it? Now I've seen it both ways. I've seen people paint or draw them with one large flower in the back, which I kind of like. Um, you can also do two, but I think today what I'm gonna do is just draw that one large one. And they are quite, quite large and round. So there we go. I might just make these a little bit more round at the edges like that. I think I like that better. And whenever I'm drawing different flowers. What I'm trying to do is really just capture that familiar shape or what we identify that particular flower with. And for me, it's these three beautiful petals. It's the darkness in the center. And the, the ones I typically see are purple or that magenta. So let's do another one. So we start with kind of that heart shape like this. And then the two on the outside. So it's almost like a little butterfly there. Then we're gonna do this round one, which to me almost looks like it's holding, embracing these beautiful little petals on the bottom. Let's do one more here. I think I will, I don't want them all facing upwards. I'm going to face this one a little bit to the left. So starting with that heart-shaped petal. And I love this eraser because it's really little. It can fit in. And then our two side ones and that big one in the back. Okay, I tried to vary those a little bit. And then what we're going to do when these are done is we'll add some greenery, maybe coming out like this. We'll see what we do. Let's go ahead. We're going to be working a lot with wet in wet. And I think I'm going to be using 
these beautiful purples and this kind of pinky purple quin with quin magenta in it. I used purple and I just mixed that in there. And these are, uh, this is the quinacridone violet with Windsor Newton. And then of course I'll use my sap green and olive greens. Okay, let me see if I can fit that in. I will try and show you the consistencies I'm painting with. I always go for that tea consistency. What I'm gonna do first is wet that bottom area. Um, yeah, let's do that. So washing and rinsing my brush, I just tap it off on the side and maybe a little bit on my paper towel. And let's go in and wet this area first. Ah, you know what, I always start on the bottom. Let's start on the top. I'm just going in with clear water using the tip of my brush. By the way, I'm using my Degato. You can use your Princeton number eight or six. This is a Degato, um, a great little starter set I've been real happy with. And we just wanna make it shiny, no puddles. I'm then going to tap my brush into this purple. And I don't want too terribly much. And let's just tap in on the outer edges. Look at that beautiful blending it's already doing. There we go. And I'll move to my next petal over here. Again, no petals, petals. Just a nice sheen and tap again into that purple. If you need to tap off your brush on your paper towel or something, go ahead. And we're just gonna let that spread. Now the bottom one, I wanna be careful. I don't want to touch these two on the side because otherwise they're just gonna all spread together. And really right now I'm working a lot with the little tips here. Pick up a little bit of that purple paint. If you're not sure if you have too much, just tap it off on your paper towel and go in. So isn't that already looking like a beautiful pansy? Now I'm gonna move to the next flower because I wanna let that dry a tiny bit. And then I'll go in with some other colors. We could maybe right now Go in and just, with a damp brush, no color. Just draw some little lines. Look at how beautiful that is. So it kind of spread it a little. Now let's let that dry just a bit so it's damp and we'll move on to our other uh, flowers here. So loading my brush with water and then tapping off and just using the side of my brush, but the main thing, making sure that you just have this beautiful shine, this beautiful sheen, no petals. And I'm going to use a little bit different purple. So this is a little deeper purple. You may not even really notice it. Which one did I paint? I think I painted this one or wet this one and tapping in, there we go. Look how beautiful. Watercolors, you guys, I swear it paints itself. Now wash and rinse my brush and go in again. Now I've got this drip happening here, so I'm just gonna tap that off. Create that nice, shiny base. Go into my purple. Tap around the outer edge, there you go. Okay, let's do our last one here. Rinsing my brush. 
creating that wet on wet. And going into my purple. And just tapping in again. So basically, this is painting itself, truly. Now what I wanna do while this is a little damp here, and actually before we move on from here, just wash, rinse your brush, tap it off, and let's do the same thing we did here, which is just kind of creating these lines outward so it just gives a hint of some of those lines. And then what I'm gonna do here while this is still damp is go into my more magenta looking purple, tap off, and let's just go in a little bit here. There we go. And maybe here. Like that. Just using the tip of my brush and I'm gonna let that sit. Okay, we can do that on this one too. So pick up a tiny bit of that Quinn magenta mixed with a little bit of purple and just outline a bit. So because that's still wet, I'm getting some blend there, which I love. You can go in and add in, just pulling that paint down using the tip of my brush. Look how pretty that is. Do that here too. Just the lightest pressure with our brush. Okay. What I'm going to do right now is, I think we can go into this top part now. This is pretty dry. So wet on wet, I'm just dampening my brush, patting it off so I don't have too much water. Make sure not to touch these two because they're wet and you don't want everything to blend together in a big mess. So you can just leave a tiny bit of white space between the two. And then that one, I want to go in with that purple, just like we did the others. Touch in. And there we go. Look how pretty that is. Wait till you see it with the yellow in there. You know how yellow has that beautiful, it's that contrasting color to purple. It's like it's opposite. Now make sure this back leaf is really a little bit larger. And there we go. Okay, I really like that. I might tap in with a tiny bit of blue Let's pick up um, this beautiful sky blue from the My Lang palette. You could also use Cerulean from your Winsor Newton and tap off. And let's just add in some touches of that here. And again, that beauty of watercolor, you can just let it mix and do its own thing. Look how pretty that is, that mix. Oh, I love that. All right. I'm already really happy with these. We're going to go in and do this big petal in the back. So I'm applying that thin layer of wetness. There we go. And use our purple to go in and touch. 
And this Artisto paper just does such a beautiful job of um, blending and I love the way it reacts with water. Now, while that's a little wet, I'll go into that cerulean or with the My Lang palette, it's that sky blue with just a little bit, tap off. And let's just touch in there because I'm really liking this color that's producing so, so pretty. There we go. Just touching in while that's wet. Yeah, I really like that. Now I might go ahead and pull that down. I'm just using a damp brush to lift a little bit of that. So I wash and tap off my brush so it's barely damp and just using the tip going up like that. Look how pretty, oh, I love this. So, so fun. Okay. We'll come back to this and add that yellow in the middle in just a bit, but let's go ahead and move on to this one. So wetting the back, kind of using the side of my brush. There we go. And again, go into any of your purples you really want is just fine. I'm going to use that purple this time, which is my favorite, my uh, uh, Windsor Newton. And then I might just tap in with a darker purple. So I'll pick up my dark purple, Let's see what that is, yeah. And tap in with that, that's a little bit of a dark value for me, so I'm adding a tiny bit more water. And then tap off to get rid of that excess, or you can tap off on your paper towel. And let's put some of that in there. So beautiful. Could even draw it down a little. Ooh. Ooh, so pretty. This is gonna be beautiful when we add in that green because purple and green are complementary. Now we might go back up again. Something like that. Just pulling upwards into there. Wait till we get that yellow in there. And then let's do this one because it's on the bottom. Or we can actually do this one, but we wanna make the sides but we want to make sure we're not touching that petal while it's wet. So lay down that wet coat and go into, I'm going to go into my regular purple this time. Touch in. There we go. And wash and blot off my brush and do something like that. We could even go into the Quinn Magenta and add some little touches while it's wet so we get that beautiful blend of those purples. And let's move over to this petal now. So wash my brush so I have clear water on there. all the way to the edges and go into our beautiful purple. Let it blend all on its own. Sometimes I swear to you, watercolors just paint themselves. Then we'll 
with a dry, clean, damp brush. I'm just pulling a little. I'll go in with my purple. Add in a few little dots here and there. There we go. Ah, so pretty. All right, let's finish off our bottom petal here, making sure not to touch these two. And go in. I think I'm gonna make that one more of a purple. There we go. Maybe add a little bit of blue to that, so. Because I love, and purple has blue in it, so it, they go really well together. And just tap in. Look at that color combination. Isn't that gorgeous? Now this may be a little dry, so we're not gonna get that blend quite as much, but look how pretty. Okay, let's go back in now and create that beautiful little center. I will go over with a light wash of water here. Got a little bit of puddling there, so I wanna pick that up. And a very, very, be very careful here. This yellow is potent, so we want a very light value, just meaning it has a lot of water. Not a lot of water on your brush, but it's diluted. And I want to go in. And add that pretty yellow color in. Okay, we're going to do that on all of these, but making sure they're dry. Let's go in here too with that dry brush. So I've got that damp brush and I'm just picking up some of that color. Oh, so pretty. Okay, I wanna go into these areas now with that deep, dark, dark purple. It's almost, gosh, what is that color? Let's see if we can create it here. Let me pick up my purple. And I think what I will add to that actually is, let's think here. Let's try like an ultramarine blue. We really want to get it dark. And I hesitate to put like a Payne's Gray in there because that might mute it a little and I don't want it muted. So I just went in with ultramarine blue and I'm using quite a thick, um, thick uh, consistency. And let's go in and create that little wet on dry. There we go. Don't wanna do this one yet because that's still wet, but we can go in and I'm just using the tip of my brush. I've got my brush straight up and down, so I'm only getting the tip of my brush on the paper. Look at that. Ooh, so pretty. I don't think I'll go into these yet because they might be a little bit damp still. So wash and rinse my brush, tap off, and let's get that yellow in here. Okay. Oop, see now I have a little too much paint. So it started to puddle there. And there we go, we've got that pretty yellow coming out. Now once that dries, we'll go back in with these dark pieces. And then I wanna go in and darken up these edges. 
This one, I'm not sure. I feel like I wanna let that dry a little. Let's right now go into these little ruffly edges. I'm gonna wash and rinse my brush. Go into this beautiful dark purple we created. Might even add in some of that Quinn magenta. So I've got a dark value, like I said, which means more pigment than water. Tap off and let's outline this a tiny bit just with the tip of my brush. I'm going around dotting in that edge. Now I'm gonna wash and rinse my brush and make sure it is only damp. Now this is where you have to practice this technique. You're holding your brush horizontal and you're just barely tapping into the edge of that line we just created. And you're pushing and pulling it down. And the trick is you don't want to tap into that entire painted edge. You're just tapping in to the very edge, feathering it out and working downwards, okay? Look how pretty that is. Let's do that with this edge as well. So I pick up my dark purple value, dot in all around the top, and then wash and rinse your brush very well. And you just want it damp. You don't want it too wet. And we're doing that push, that pull, but making sure we're just tapping into that edge and pulling it down. Look how pretty that is. Love that. Ugh, oh, these are so pretty. Okay. I think the other thing I'm going to do is, let's see if this, yeah, this is pretty dry. Let's go in and put in that dark purple which we mixed with some of that purple. And then I added in ultramarine blue. Is that the ultramarine blue? No. Nope. Yeah. Got a really dark, cool, it's on the cool side. And tap off. And let's go in and add these. Ooh, now see, I've got little petals. So all I wanna do is tap off. Just using the tip of my brush. There we go. So, so pretty. And I think this is probably dry, so we can go in there as well. and do the same thing. Ah, oh, love that. And then how about we go in the top here with this line of purple. Just like that. I think what I'll do is add in a little bit of that Quinn in there. There we go. And now wash and rinse my brush. Tap it off so it's damp. Hold your brush horizontal because you're just barely tapping in. And feathering out, pulling that edge downwards. Oh, so, so beautiful. Okay, let's see if we can go into this now. It's pretty dry and you can usually feel because it won't be cool. And lay down a very thin layer of wetness. Don't go over it too much because you'll pick up that paint. And then go into our yellow. And there we go. Ah, oh, so pretty. This should be... Oh, see, that's very cool. So I can't go into that quite yet. So I'm just going to leave that. Let's go ahead and go in and uh, paint a few of our stems here for you. 
Uh, let me find my little... Doo -doo -doo. I took a picture of some pansies. Okay. And this, again, is one of those times when I really don't like the little <laughs> raggedy pansy leaves. So I'm going to kind of do a version of my own. Can play with the sap green and olive green. And let's go in and create a stem coming out here, maybe following there. Just like that. So we've got this beautiful S shape. Now we'll start painting in some of those leaves. Point, press, and you can add in those raggedy edges. They're not my thing, but that's okay. Point, press, and then add in those raggedy edges. I'm going to use a little different color. Point press. And let's get those raggedy edges. There we go. Let's do one right here. Point press. Point press. And create those raggedy edges. There we go. Let's do a few more. I'm going to lighten my value, which just means I'm adding more water. Have one come out here. Something like that. Maybe have one peeking out. So playing with those values so you get light and dark values. Point press and then add in the little raggedy edges. Okay. I even like to add in, create a green and add in a little bit of that purple to it. I just think it makes for such a beautiful little contrast. So I'm going to do one of those leaf petals leaves here. Point, press, widening out my brush. And there we go. Okay. Make these little raggedy leaves. Go back to my green, my sap green. Add in, let's do one coming out. Well, let's do one. I want to make one coming out here. Point and our little raggedy edges. color in some green here. Maybe even have one coming out like that. So I'm just trying to draw our line down. Point, press, do those little raggedy edges. Oop, I got a little fuzz there. Something like that. So I'm varying color values. I'm varying um, my values. Point press. And then the little raggedy edges. Maybe creating one in the background here. There we go. Okay, I think that's really pretty. 
Now, what do I want to do? I want to, maybe we want to make one that kind of looks like a bud opening in the background there. So I'm going to use a very light value of that purple. And let's just create maybe a little pansy that's on its side there. Wash and rinse my brush, go in with my green. There we go. I think that's kind of pretty. We could maybe make one coming out right here. So go into a very light value of the purple. Lots of water. Tap off my brush. Let's make another one come out right here. Kind of like it's on its side. It's maybe getting ready to open. Tap in a little bit there too. And wash and rinse my brush. Go in with that green. Tap in while it's wet. Yeah, I think that's really pretty. Okay. Let's draw in that bright yellow center. So grab some of your lemon yellow and your cad yellow and make a pretty thick consistency, almost like cream or milk. And we're gonna go in and draw that little center. Everything should be dry now, like that. Oh, that is so pretty, guys. And I think we're about done now. Yeah, that's really, really lovely, I think. And I, oops, dripped a little water there. I love, I used, remember those values. I used light and darks, and you could even go back into these and darken up some things. But I'm quite liking just how it is right now. I think I might do one more dark petal here. So let's grab our sap green. and create maybe one petal coming out here so it draws my eye down here. Point press, add in those little ruffly things. There, yeah, I think that's quite nice. I'm gonna create just a little bit more of a sap greeny, maybe some olive green, and come out here. Point press and add in. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Maybe go in with a different value here and just create some little things like that. Oh, so pretty. And there you go. I think I will just leave this like this. We could always go in and um, add in that dark purple there because that's quite dry. So let me grab my blue and my purple Darken that up a bit. Make sure you don't touch into that yellow we just put in there. And there you go, guys. I think this is just beautiful. If you want a detail, you could add in a few of those. Ooh. Okay, that is a sign I need to stop. So I'm going to stop right here. All right, have fun painting this, and um, I'm excited for you to give this a try. I'll list all of my supplies in the bottom, and happy painting, everybody. Bye.